No far that Walt Harris would be a great addition to Donnell Wolford and Bobby Ingram. You don't have to look any farther in their draft this year. Bobby Ingram would be a great compliment to Curtis Conway if they can keep Curtis motivated for 16 games. He started off, had a great 12, 12 games, but then he fell off there at the end. Yeah, but those great 12 games were good enough to get him four years and $10 million in free agency. I think, and also Brian Cox. Brian Cox in the middle is going to make a world of difference to teams like Green Bay who ran the football effectively against them. Hey, Chicago is the all-attitude city. Cox in the NFL, Rodman in the NBA, and Jerry. Jeremy Roenick and Chris Chelios. Oh, we need we need a good like a uh, Randy Myers type guy back with the Cubs or somebody with the White Sox to kind of stir it a little bit. Uh, in this division, who do you like, Mel? I think when you look at this, I still like Green Bay. I think Green Bay still a class football team, great coaching staff led by Mike Holmgren. It's going to be tough with a young gun like Brett Favre, you know, at his peak. Uh, this is a tough football team. I think if they can keep Reggie White and Sean Jones healthy, and I think if Edgar Bennett can stay healthy like he did, they are the, the, the you know the cream of the crop in the NFC Central. And I think they're going to be right where they were last year with an opportunity to go to Super Bowl. For a long time, San Francisco's 49ers have been the cream of the crop in the NFC West. Atlanta joined them in the playoffs last year, and the other three teams coming within a game of 500. Carolina, the best ever NFL expansion team. Draft day impacted Mel. I, the first thing I think I asked you this morning about 38,000 hours ago why did they add so many DBs when they have Eric Allen and Mark McMillan high ticket free agents on the corners I think because they, they have a great concept of what it takes to win in this division you have to beat the Atlanta Falcons with the, the run and shoot red gun with those four wide receivers you have to beat the 49ers you need three corners who can cover and they have Alex Molden a great cover guy Gerard Cherry can play inside at a safety spot he was also a corner so you know he can match up Brady Smith gets after the quarterback so now your defense is better to handle Atlanta and the 49ers and I think in the late rounds Terry Guest could be a real fine a junior came out early great physical ability and they were 22nd in pass defense on that other side of the ball to further drive home the importance not just the division but every game mm -hmm. people were passing on them like they were to other teams who are you looking at when the mind goes the body goes but when the body goes first in professional sports it's very very dangerous and I think that's what's happening to the San Francisco 49ers they're an older team they got a lot of experience but they don't have a lot of guys with a lot of youth but you go through their, their draft pick I think Terrell Owens might be the steal in this draft because he's just like Jerry Rice and he's from a small school has a lot to prove I think other than that they got guys that may step in and play I think the guy from Cal I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce his name Ianni Uwe is okay him I think yeah. he could be a, a real nice find because they're not happy with JJ Stokes but but they, their, their minds, they know what the offense, they know the defense, they know where they're supposed to be. They're just an older team, and their bodies can't get them there. You say they're not happy with J.J. Stokes. What do you mean by that? I think J.J. Stokes disappointed them because of his worth et work ethic, you know, being around Jerry Rice. And I think he just didn't prepare himself for what he was going to see on Sunday. I don't think he can read a defense very well, and I think he has trouble getting in and out of his breaks. And he wants to be the guy with Jerry Rice, but I don't think he's willing to put up the sacrifices to become that guy. Still the Niners? Unfortunately, still the Niners. What do you Niners. mean, unfortunately? Well, I mean, you look at, at the, a team that's, that has been there that long, and you, you kind of like to see competition, and you know, like the Green Bay Packers have done in the Central, but the, the 49ers are, are far and away still probably the best team in that division. They're going to win 12 games a year, or you know, 11 games a year. In that division. And it helps because of the division. Five of six years, they've been in the playoffs in remarkable 13 years straight double-digit wins for the San Francisco 49ers. Everybody's chasing the Dallas Cowboys, though. Dallas, Green Bay, San Francisco, division champs in the NFC last year, and a couple of those teams have helped themselves a little bit here in the 1996 draft, which continues after this. Jesse, Jesse, you're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks, but will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. Way out there, there's hops. Without hops, beer wouldn't taste as good as it does. Take the best part of the hops, the beer's gonna taste even better. We found a way now, makes it possible to brew beer straight from the heart of the hops. For a beer with heart that goes down easy. We think so much of this new beer, we're just calling it who we are. Miller, always new possibilities. You gotta reach for what's out there.
Look who's winning at McDonald's. Joanne Pearson won an IBM Aptiva computer. Mike White won a Disney video. Come play the Disney Video Masterpiece Collection Trivia Challenge today at McDonald's. You could be next. Look who's winning at McDonald's. Pamela Donnelly won a million dollars. Jerry Kenny won a hundred thousand dollars. Come play the Disney Video Masterpiece Collection Trivia Challenge today at McDonald's. You could be next. This is our control room here in New York. Kevin, Dan, everybody else, great job, guys. Dan's playing hurt, too. Believe me, I've been listening to him for seven hours. The draft rolls on the last six selections here as we're sitting on pick now two, two, four. Uh, among the selections, Cedric Clark, a defensive end out of Tulsa, senior who runs a 4-8-40, who tied Dennis Bird with school record 20 career quarterback sacks. Cedric Clark moving on to the Oakland Raiders, who have just selected again at slot 2. 24, and you see their pick. And once again, if you're joining us, not just the bottom line, too, updating us on all the scores, but also the draft team by team, so you can see how your favorite team has done through six and a half rounds. We have our draft going on here. We do not have a crawl on the bottom of the screen of how the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader draft is going on. That's, that's why we have Chris Myers with us, and Chris joins us from Valley Ranch. Well, it's, you know, it's my job, Mike. It's, it's what I do. We talked about the free agents and the, the scramble that will take place after the draft. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleading competition taking place today at Texas Stadium. Whittled down for more than 600 cheerleaders. They'll get it down to 32. We'll take a look at some of those that participated earlier today. I don't have my scouting report with me, but you see this is probably the Latoya Jackson look. And then we got the Pulp Fiction thing happening here. And uh, these are some of the other contestants that range between the ages of 18 and 36. I know you'd like to be pulled over by her. And we got the, the Elvira look-alike as well. And uh, when they whittle this down, these cheerleaders will actually go to a training camp, a rehearsal for cheerleaders. There's the prince or the symbol or whatever he's calling himself. A clueless might best work for that. But uh, one thing you should know, that the cheerleaders are actually only paid $15. Of course, that does not include appearance money, and they will whittle it down to 32. This is the 25th year anniversary of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleading team. We tried War Room Cam. Uh, they would not allow it. Next year, the competition, Mike, might be broadcast on ESPN3. Let's go back to you in New York. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be a Mel Kuyper draft guide on that, too, right? Chris, I'm helping on that one. I'm, I'm helping on that one. <laughs> Chris, thank you. Chris Myers joining us from Dallas, as always. Uh, Chris adds uh, some levity as well as the serious stuff to the draft, and so does Nick Fakai, who is uh, standing behind us on the draft floor. Nick, one of the big stories of the first day was Keyshawn Johnson, a name that just kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Keyshawn Johnson. You know, there there are a lot of different ways of evaluating talent. I know Mel Kuyper uh, always looks to hair volume. Other guys look for the vertical leap, the speed in the 40. For me, the ultimate yardstick of NFL greatness, how would John Facenda have described this player? You can have all that other stuff. When it comes to gut check time, I want to know how the late great voice of NFL films would put a player into poetry in motion. Let's take Keyshawn Johnson, the top pick this year. What would Facenda say? <laughs> Keyshawn Johnson. The mere name causes spittle to collect in the corner of a defensive back's mouth as he contemplates covering this elongated split end from the University of Southern California. Limber, agile, wiggly, wambly, wombly. Clearly on the seventh day, the good Lord did not rest, but set about creating a man with the total package. See the ball, catch the ball, run with the ball. One part dominator, one part gazelle. A prancing zephyr who invokes the kind of fey prose I haven't uttered since the glory days of Bambi, Lance Allworth. God, look at those taut hams, the buttocks. <laughs> but I digress. Keyshaw, can mere words describe this multifaceted frankfurter with plenty of mustard? Like Ron Jeremy, always a threat to go deep. In my day, players shunned the spotlight, toiling anonymously in the mud.